So we have breaking news out of Sweden with the ASAP Rocky case and Donald Trump or President Donald Trump is giving his tweets as to what's going on. Now, if you haven't been following this case, let me give you a quick recap. ASAP Rocky was doing a show in Stockholm, Sweden, and in that time, he was out and about with some of his entourage. He came across, or sorry, uh, the accuser, Mr. Jaffari, J-A-F-A-R-I, had come across the group and said that he was looking for his friends. This caused an altercation between ASAP Rocky and his entourage where he was shoved away. ASAP Rocky had posted a number of videos on his Instagram, especially after TMZ had posted it as well, of this individual following him and his group. Later on, a confrontation occurred where ASAP Rocky is shown on video tossing the accuser and three of his entourage jumping up and fighting him. Now, the case had happened uh, this week. They have just come to a conclusion after closing arguments. ASAP, as well as the accuser, had testified, and the defense is going with self-defense, saying that this person stalked and followed him. He has a record for uh, drug abuse in the past, and ASAP said that this person had confronted him as if he was high or drunk, and based on his past of being held at knife point, as well as being robbed, he thought that anything could happen. Now, you're seeing clips here because the media was not allowed to be in the room. Uh, this was a four-panel um, courtroom where the jury's not deciding, but four judges are instead. Now, right now, the judges have said they will come back with a verdict on August 14th. And until then, ASAP Rocky, along with his um, co-defendants, are allowed to leave the country if they want. Now, President Donald Trump, as I said, tweeted that there's a bit of a play on words, that ASAP had a bit of a rocky weekend and told him to get back home ASAP. Now, ASAP obviously doesn't stand for as soon as possible, uh, but I'm assuming that he will be back stateside and will be returning in Sweden for the 14th. I'm joined here with my guests. I believe we've all pretty much seen the video. We've heard some of the allegations. Uh, first to you, Kitty. As we're looking at, I mean, it's, it's a, not a murder case. It's not the biggest case of, of the century that we've seen, but with President Trump jumping in and the celebrity status around this case, we're being able to, to watch it. From the video, the testimony, the allegations, the background, everything that we're seeing, I know we don't practice in Sweden, but how is this looking for ASAP? I mean, from an American perspective, knowing what I know here, I mean, it seems like he's a really good case for self-defense. He's got a lot of witnesses. He has a lot of evidence. There's been a lot of testimony in support of him. It seems like his accuser has a colored past to some extent. It sounds like it's really good for him. I just don't know how the Swedish system plays out, but hopefully it'll bring him justice. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. As I said, there are four different judges, and the way it works is if three of the four judges come to a verdict, that's it. If it's 50-50, the prosecution gets to ask for a read trial. Now, Joseph, you looked at some of the video as well, and, and I believe there's some injuries that seem to be pretty serious. Now, the uh, accuser is saying that a bottle was used, which would heighten this to a whole other level of, of prosecution. From my understanding, the, there are two things. One, the maximum penalty for this charge is only two years. But I believe the prosecution has come on the record saying we're only looking for six, six months, sorry. And so as we're looking at the facts and kind of the ceiling that the prosecution has already set up, I mean, I think, I, I, to, to Katie's point, there's a strong argument for self-defense here. But if he goes down, I mean, that's a few months in, in Swedish jail. It is, although he has credit for time served. But let, let's look at the big picture. You're in front of four judges, you're pleading your case for self-defense, and they let your client uh, go out of custody and go home while they put together the verdict. That's a pretty good sign. I'd be very happy in, in that instance. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for, for the most part, I think where, where all of us practice, uh, where someone is facing charges, and I know, again, these are, these are not as severe as the cases we typically follow, uh, after the verdict, the person usually stays in. If you recall, ASAP Rocky's been incarcerated since I believe about early July. They kept him in pending the investigation. They kept him in during the trial. Some of the sketches you saw there, he's wearing a green outfit. That's not his. That's the Swedish equivalent of an orange jumpsuit. And I think he was only wearing a suit for the final court date. I think this is a sketch from the final court date uh, where he was wearing a suit. So I think to Joseph's point, the fact that he's released, Katie, like, he gets to go home. And, and right now, I think with Sweden, if you're thinking about it, if the president is in full support of ASAP Rocky and he's allowed to go home, I don't think President Trump is going gonna, is gonna to say, hey, he has to be extradited if he's found guilty. I think Joseph's correct. This might just be a slap on the wrist and no jail time. I think it's a strong indication of how 
the bench is feeling, right? I, they, I think if they really were leaning towards conviction or if there wasn't enough time for them to say time served, they wouldn't have let him go home, Trump support or not. Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. And I know that in, in other areas we said that, um, hey, maybe the involvement of the president might have hurt because I know there's this theory out there. And don't get me wrong, when the president advocates for a citizen on foreign soil, I think that is tantamount to that, to that person's job. That is great. But the question becomes now, Joseph, because we've seen kind of the back and forth between the, the, the Swedish prime minister and, and President Donald Trump to saying, hey, our justice system is going to do its job. You stay out of it. Do you think that his involvement could have uh, helped or hurt ASAP in any kind of way? Uh, to whatever degree there is negative sentiment against Trump in Sweden, if the judges take offense to his meddling, then um, I, I think it could hurt. If the, if the Swedish judges are saying, hey, who is this Trump guy? He's trying to tell us what to do. Let's show him that we have our own power, then um, it would hurt. But we don't know how the Swedish court is thinking. It might just have no impact at all. Yeah. And again, when we're, when we're looking at this case, so... The, the maximum sentence is jail time, two years, but there's no minimum. So when, when you have a case like this, Katie, when, the, when there's no minimum, so the minimum could be, he could be found guilty and they could say, hey, you know what? You sat in jail for about three, three and a half weeks, time served. Right. I, I, is that a, still a victory at the end of the day? I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, it's a victory to the extent you don't have to go back, right? But I think that anything short of an acquittal for him would not feel like a legitimate victory. But obviously, again, the, the punishment is the worst part. And if you've already been sitting in jail and you don't have to do any more time, it's partial victory. Yeah. And, and, and to the, and again, I don't know, Joseph, please, Kermit Haram, Katie Kermit Haram, I don't think any of us are experts in self-defense in Sweden. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> but as we're looking at it, it begs the question that if someone is following you, and I think the excuse he gave is first, the initial interaction was, um, that he was looking for his friend. And then it was about trying to get his headphones back. And there was something about him not knowing that who Aesop's Rocky was or that he was famous, which to me boggles my mind. I think, I think it's one thing to say, I don't know this person's famous. But if I see someone who's walking around with an entourage, I'm going to guess there's someone important. And I'm going to do something I don't typically do and play a bit of the race card as well. It's Sweden. I know that when I travel abroad and I'm six foot four, and they're like, oh, oh, like in, in Asia or Europe, they're like, oh, you must be a basketball player. You must be this. You must be someone famous. And if two or three people are following me, they, they think that as well. So I can't imagine in a predominantly white country, you see a black guy who's being escorted by an entourage and nothing goes off in your mind that says, this person's famous, why am I following them? I, 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 can't, I can't coincide that, Katie. That seems to not make sense to me. It makes absolutely no sense. It, 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 just, it, it doesn't. It makes absolutely no sense. But here's the other thing, too. I mean, famous or not, you're not supposed to be following and stalking people. I mean, it doesn't mean that any violence can be inflicted on you as a result, but it certainly chips away at the credibility of this guy's story and also about how reasonable he was being. Yeah, and, and, and Joseph, to, to the stalking, and I, to the stalking as well as, from my understanding, the uh, defense attorney was able to drum up some negative history on the accuser, that he does have a criminal record uh, for drug use in the past, and where Aesop Rocky is saying, hey, this person didn't look like they were in their right mind, and this person's following me. I mean, I, I don't know a single person alive who would say, hey, if someone looks like they're intoxicated on some sort of drugs, and they're following me for blocks and blocks and blocks, and I'm telling them to leave them alone, that they do not feel threatened. I think that anyone in the world, Sweden, America, um, South Africa, New Zealand, they're gonna say, hey, I think I need to defend myself at some point. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just his entourage, it was his bodyguards. And his bodyguards were big people, which again would give a normal, reasonable person a clue that, hey, there's something special about this person. They're being surrounded by really big, strong looking people, obviously bodyguards. So, and there was interaction between the accuser and the bodyguard. Um, I think if you watch the video and if you were to ask yourself, would I go up to however big the guy is, you know, six foot four, 350 pounds, would I go up and get in his face and push him and try to hit him with, with headphones? The answer would be no to a reasonable person. So the fact that the accuser did this, I think, um, benefits a, a defense of self-defense.
I, I would say absolutely no. I've been accused of being unreasonable, Joseph, but I'm 6'4", 215. If I see a guy even 40 pounds heavier than me, and I'm like, no. I need this face for the show. I'm not trying to get it messed up. And I'm looking at pictures of this guy. He's, he's tiny. He's got to be maybe like a buck 20 soaking wet trying to attack these larger guys. I kind of believe ASAP when I'm saying, this guy's got to be on something. Like, like, that doesn't make sense. Katie, like, like, do you go picking on guys my size thinking, like, this is going to make sense? That's what I do every Saturday. I'm like, yes, let's go pick a fight. Yeah, I mean, and that's, and that's part of the thing. Like, not only is this person maybe on something, but they, they clearly have a malevolent intent. If they're doing this stuff over and over, it just doesn't make any sense. I would be, I would be scared if I were Rocky. And the, here's the part that I think is weird. How did it get this far? Why did the prosecution in Sweden decide to push this forward. I don't know what their threshold is for prosecuting cases, but from like the, the, the snapshot look at this, it just doesn't even pass the smell test to me. Yeah, it doesn't. But they prosecuted, the evidence has come in, the judge has, or the judges, sorry, now have the case, and we're gonna find out the verdict on August 14th when ASAP Rocky and his co-defendants are supposed to be coming back, hopefully they do come back, and there's not an international incident uh, for this case. We're gonna continue with the knock case. We still have the verdict watch and more after this break.